What's going on guys? This is Manalki and today I just wanted to share my thoughts on the new mummy themed Warframe in Naros. So what is Inaros? Well, like I said, he's a mummy themed Warframe. You can get him from the new Sands of Inaros quest, which is really, really, really awesome. I'm not going to spoil it for you here. If you haven't played that quest, go play it. Even if you've already got the frame, like if you bought him, just play the quest. It's really cool. If you're into the lore, like the storyline of the game and the backstory and all that stuff, really cool quest. Go play it for sure. Inaros is extremely tanky. He has a huge health pool, a lot of armor, no shields, mind you. He is very, very tough nonetheless. And he's all about life stealing. A lot of his abilities revolve around leeching the life of your enemies. And a lot of his abilities will go into, uh, go into doing that. And it's extremely effective when you combine it with the high health pool. So let's have a quick look at his abilities, get an idea of what he's all about. His first ability is called Desiccate, and basically what that does is it throws sand in people's eyes. Yep, that's pretty much what it does. It blinds them, which opens them up to finisher attacks. Now, that's good regardless, but that's particularly good for Inaros because one of his passive abilities is he gets a huge amount of life restored to him whenever he performs a finishing attack. So it's a nice, really nice good way to get some health back if you're running low, just blind somebody and stab them. Also this ability drains life a little bit. Not too fast. You need a lot of enemies caught in it draining to really get any real benefit so it's not the most useful effect really but it's just it's something. So his second ability is called Devour and what this one will do is if you just tap it and target somebody it'll trap them in place and it's going to allow anybody you or your teammates to walk up and eat them. So you eat the enemy and you gain a whole bunch of health back and while you're doing that you are invincible. So it can be used in a pinch if you're surrounded by a lot of really really strong enemies. You can devour one of them like one of the tougher ones and wait for your maybe your squad mates to clean up the rest while you kind of sit there and vulnerable devouring. You can also hold the button rather than just tap it you can hold the button while you're aiming at the enemy and that's going to pull the enemy to you for a uh, quick and convenient devouring. Now another effect of this ability is if the enemy is actually killed by the devourer and it's an arrows himself doing the devouring, this won't work for your teammate, the, uh, the enemy will actually uh, die and become a sand clone, so like almost like a, like a zombie made of sand or whatever, and he'll run around and fight for you, and he will last a duration based on how long it took to devour him. So if you spend half a second devouring some little level 2 lancer, he's not going to last very long, but if you spend, you know, five minutes devouring some high level bombard, well he's going to last quite a while. And it does take a long time to devour some of the higher level enemies. The d damage kind of falls off after a while and becomes a bit negligible and so it's, I don't know. I, I don't use it a whole lot. I find it tedious, especially in a survival mission where time is kind of critical. You can't be standing there devouring somebody for five minutes. So anyway, that's uh, <laughs> that's Devour. His next ability is called Sandstorm. I would say this is his, well, my favorite ability of his. It's a lot of fun. Basically what he does is he starts twirling in a, a whirl of sand, and it, it picks everybody up and starts twirling them around in the air. It's really, really fun. It does a semi-decent amount of damage. At low to mid-level, you'll actually kill things with this ability. At high level, it doesn't really like again it like everything else it falls off at high level um, so you're not going to be killing anything with this at high level but it's still a lot of fun to pick everybody up and throw them around it'll also drag power-ups to you but it will not pick them up like you won't collect them you'll just almost like carrier except you, you don't pick the power-ups up you just kind of drag them close and then when you exit the form you pick them up also you move at half speed and you take half damage while in this form so it's it's a fun form. If you happen to be near a cliff or a pit or something, it's great to throw enemies into the pit. It just it's just a lot of fun. It's I I would say it's his favorite my favorite ability of his. I just wish they would do something about the damage fall off at high level, but you could say that about ninety nine percent of the abilities in the game, so I guess I can't really complain about that too much. Now his fourth ability is called Scarab Swarm and it has kind of a dual use here. So the way this works is you hold down the button, uh, your four button, and it'll 
you'll get covered in sand and scarabs and stuff and it'll it'll make armor so as you hold the button down your health will drain extremely fast and you will get armor now I've heard it said that in com combination with a steel fiber you can bring your armor level up to somewhere in the neighborhood of 600 something so you get quite a bit of damage reduction from this armor but of course you'll be left well, by the time you're done charging it you're gonna be left with not a lot of health I say not a lot of health but that's not a lot of health by Inaros' standards. You're still going to be standing there with more health pool than any other Warframe in the game. Basically, you're going to want to heal up. But that's where his other abilities come in. You can, oh no, like, oh no, you're, you're low on health. What do I do? Well, anything. <laughs> Use any of your abilities. You can desiccate somebody and do a finisher on them. You can devour somebody. Or you could recast Scarab Swarm. If you tap the button while you have the armor active, what it's going to do is it's going to tag an enemy, kind of like desiccate, except they're going to be trapped in place, they're going to get covered in scarabs, and they're going to get devoured by the scarabs, and that life steal, like, it leeches life for you, so you gain your life back extremely quickly. But best of all, this ability spreads to any enemy within five meters of anybody infected. So if somebody comes into the area, if somebody comes into five meters of the enemy getting eaten, or devoured by the scarabs, he's going to start getting eaten by scarabs, and now he's going to transfer life to you and it, it just kind of spreads that way so if you have a large group of enemies and you're hurting on health just hit them with scarab swarm run away and you're you're going to like regen your health almost instantly it's crazy and the and the cool thing is while you're re while you're doing that if you're quick about it if you regen your health quick enough you can recast the armor and retop up your armor because casting scarab swarm as an ability like that only uses 25% of your armor so you'll go from 100% armor to 75% and so if you're quick about it, you can charge it back up while they're still draining life. And you can basically get 100% life and 100% armor without it costing you anything really in. Kind of like a pure profit situation. One thing I did forget to mention, of course, is that uh, when you cast Devour on somebody, you just kind of tap it and they're trapped in the Devour state. And you move over them with Sandstorm, it will also devour them. Maros also has an extremely interesting bleed out state. So basically what happens is, instead of going down on his back and shooting away with his secondary weapons, he's actually going to go into his sarcophagus. And what's going to happen is, he's going to, whenever you point your cursor at an enemy, it's going to drain their health. You're going to get this little beam of energy extend from you to the enemy, and it's going to slowly drain their health. And if you drain enough health, you'll end up reviving yourself, which is really, really cool at low level. Like I keep saying with everything else, at low level, this is great. You just keep reviving yourself, and uh, you're good to go. But, like I said, as with everything else, this has no application at high level whatsoever. So maybe they could change it in such a way as to key off of how much time you've spent looking at an enemy instead of how much energy you've drained from them. But that's just my own thoughts on it. Great at low level, worthless at high level, unfortunately. So let's talk a little bit about modding. Because he has no shields... There's no reason to mess around with redirection or or any of the shield mods, any of the shield recharge mods or whatever. You can completely ditch those in favor of other stuff. So he has a high base armor. It's in the 200s. So obviously you're going to want steel fiber. He has an enormous health pool. It's a ridiculously high health pool. So of course you're going to want vitality. And depending on how you're running, you know, I, I wouldn't, I don't personally go for vigor but I could see why you would put it on there. I like to go with Rage, because again, he has no shields, which means every hit he takes will be to his health, which means whenever you get hit, you're gonna gain, you're gonna gain uh, energy, which is awesome. It works out really well with him. You're never short on energy. You do not need energy siphon with this frame. Just throw on uh, Rage, and you will have all the energy you will ever need. It's great. I run with Flow, personally, because I like to have a lot of energy and you know you're gonna get hit so much on your health you're gonna be regening so much energy that it's almost a waste not to have a large health pool plus a lot of the abilities are quite uh, are pretty mana heavy like that sandstorm drains your mana like crazy and, and all that stuff so I like to be able to do that for a long time so I like to use rage now you know life strike we all know what life strike does it's a very effective mod but on Inaros I would go so far as to call uh, Rage and Life Strike on Inaros a little bit broken. It'd be a shame to see it nerfed, but 
honestly, it I would call that too strong. Rage and Life Strike well, and Steel Fiber on Inaros, you, you're, you're just not going to die. You, you will not die. If you die, it means you weren't paying attention. Because your health pool is going to be upwards of 4,600 health points. Your armor is going to be in the 600s. And you're going to have Life Strike with unlimited mana, basically, because... Sorry, I say mana, but energy. You get the idea. <laughs> you're going to have Life Strike, and so you're never going to run out of energy, even if you don't have any channeling uh, efficiency mods on your on your weapon, despite the minus, I think it's 140% channeling efficiency on Life Strike, minus that, like, even, even despite that, like, you're not going to run out of ammo, or <laughs> ammo, you're not going to run out of energy, and so you're going to be able to Life Strike for a lot, like, against a lot of enemies, and you're never going to run out of health, so this, this frame is capable of some extremely high level, long, survival runs and you're just not going to die because like, it's like oh no half my health is gone like one or two hits to an enemy or, and you're you're back up to full health and you can just keep doing that like so it just doesn't run out so i'm sure there's a lot of other ways to build in aros but i like to go vitality steel fiber and rage and then flow and i throw a little bit of efficiency on there so that my uh my sandstorm lasts a longer i like power strength on there throw some intensify you, you can go for corrupted mods. I don't go for corrupted mods on an Aros, but uh, anyway, that's how I mod him, and it's extraordinarily effective. He is a super tank, maybe even tankier than Chroma, I would say probably, just because of his insanely high health pool. I, w I don't know, it's, it's a toss-up, but I feel like he might outdo Chroma for his tankiness. The only other thing about an Aros is his alt helmets. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Fez hat, <laughs> that he comes with it's like this pharaoh looking fez hat and i'm not really not a big fan but uh the anubis alt helmet that he gets is badass it is completely and utterly badass if you like this frame it's a no-brainer to grab that helmet it's just absolutely amazing so anyway to sum up very tanky a lot of fun to play you know no shields lots of armor lots of health and he can twirl people in a sandstorm. That's just freaking awesome. But anyway, uh, those are just my thoughts on Anaros. Uh, I'd love to hear yours. Leave some in the comments below. I'd love to read that. So that's all I really have to say about <laughs> that Warframe. I really like him. I'm really enjoying him. So hopefully you do too. So as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time.